Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video we got a couple of very interesting uh, bodybuilding updates. The first one is apparently Jay Cutler's physique at the age of 51. And apparently he posted this only on uh, Facebook. He just turned 51 and he posted this video, I'm gonna show you a video in a moment. The caption says, in celebration of my 51st birthday, and I wanna wish Jay Cutler happy birthday, but yeah, apparently he posted this only on Facebook, nowhere else. And I know what you're thinking, who is even using Facebook anymore? Well, I guess I am, and I caught this, and I thought it was weird that he didn't post this on Instagram or anywhere else, so I thought it could be an older video from like last year, back when he did his uh, Fit for 50 challenge. But none of those videos uh, look like this, so this is a new video. I don't know if this is from this year, from right now, but I guess it is. I mean, he says it's in celebration of his 51st birthday. And, like, if you watch his podcast, his uh, Cutler cast, you know that he is still very much regimented. He's still doing everything to look his absolute best, to be in shape, to be healthy. And I'm not surprised that he looks like this right now. So let me show you the video. So, as you can see, his uh, conditioning, his body fat percent is very low. It's very, very low. It's almost like he's prepping for a bodybuilding competition, but of course, he's not doing that. The back, however, you know, he was always having those wrinkles. Even when he was winning the Mr. Olympias, the back was always the area where he was holding the most water and, and fat, I guess. Uh, and that was always the body part that was the softest on Jay's physique. And also, like, when you get older, along with legs and usually shoulders, back is the body part that atrophies the most. And you can see it for sure. Like, also those wrinkles and, like, some uh, body fat in the, in the love handles area. The back is not looking that great, but, like, from the front... He basically looks like he's, I don't know, 30 or something like that, like, uh, maybe, like, tops, I don't know, 36, you know, he doesn't look like he's 51 from the front, especially in the upper body, like, the abs are looking great, very low body fat percent, the chest also still has a lot of muscle on it, like, it's still full and, and wide, uh, the shoulders, yeah, he lost some fullness and, and, and roundness to the shoulders, that was his strongest body part, basically, along with the legs, but I think he got it back from last year. I think in those videos when he was turning 50, like, shoulders were down quite a bit, they were just, you know, melted. Now I think he revived them a little, I think they're looking fuller and broader and, like, rounder now. Uh, Jay Cutler basically got away without that many injuries throughout his career. I mean, the only notable injury was when he lost to Phil Heath in 2011 when he tore his bicep. And that wasn't that big of an injury. Like, he didn't have any big injuries, any big tears as far as I know. Uh, he also didn't have any health issues. He retired very healthy, internally and externally as well. And he was just holding on to a very good shape for all these years. I mean, it's been over 10 years since his retirement, and uh, he was holding on to a really good shape, and lately, in the past a year or two, he started, like, uh, being a little bit more regimented, and he got a lot of the size back, like, now he looks pretty jacked, right? Very, very lean, very muscular, he's looking very good right now, I gotta say. Now, like I said, along with the shoulders and, like, the width of the shoulders and the size of those freaking delts, his strongest body part were his legs. Not just uh, the way, the, not just how big they were, but, like, how separated and detailed they were. And, I mean, they were also very, very big. But right now, I mean, uh, it's, it's always the body part that goes away first with age. Legs, and then I would say back along with it, and then the width of the shoulders, and like the waist gets bigger, and so on. It's gonna happen to all of us, guys, don't worry. But as far as Jay Cutler right now, I mean, he's still holding on to a decent amount of size in the legs. He's definitely a lot more muscular, like in the chest and, and the arms, and you know, the front part of the upper body. But the legs, they're not gonna be as big as they were in 2001 or 2009. Uh, but they're still very, very good for a guy who is 51 years of age. I mean, I don't know how heavy he's squatting, what kind of uh, leg workouts he's doing at his age. But yeah, like the separation is still there. There are cuts, very visible. Like his conditioning is very good. So the separation is very deep. His legs are lean. And I mean, they are pretty big, again, for a guy who is 50 freaking one. Not as big as he once was, but he's holding on to a really good amount of size, and he looks very, very good. And I believe he's going to maintain this, this sort of look for a lot of years. I believe he's going to be very much fit when he's uh, 60, even. I mean, again, no injuries, no health issues. He can still do, basically, bodybuilding without any consequences and look great. 
Whatever you guys think about Jay Cutter's physique right now, tell me down below in the comment section. Alright, the next physique update is very interesting. It is Rafael Brandau at nine and a half weeks out of Mr. Olympia. And you guys probably remember still that he placed third at the Arnold Classic Ohio and that he won the Arnold Classic Brazil. But there hasn't really been a lot of talk about this guy since that happened. And there was a lot of other guys who were very very popular this year who are also like in that same level like Rafael Brandau and I would like to single out three guys if that makes sense single out three guys I'm not sure but like Rafael Brandau, Bekrus Tabani and Martin Fitzwater I believe those three guys are gonna be the third call out at the Mr. Olympia you know, right after Hadi Chopin, uh, Derek Lansford, Samson Daura, and then somewhere in between the first and the second would be probably Nick Walker, and then Andrew Jack, Brandon Curry, Hunter Labrada, and then the third callout, in my opinion, would be Rafael Brandau, Bekrus Tabani, if he makes it to the Mr. Olympia to the US, and then also Martin Fitzwater. So that's gonna be very interesting to see who's gonna win amongst uh, these three guys. So, Rafael Brandau, right now, I mean, when I saw those physique updates that he posted a couple of days ago, apparently those were just mirror photos, and in that mirror he looked like twice the size that he is right now, so apparently he didn't make that much progress since the Arnold Classic. He also became a father, like, a couple of days ago, so I don't know what to expect from him, but uh, let's say he is at his 100%. The way he was at the Arnold Classic, for example, like that was, you know, decent conditioning with a lot of size, definitely a lot bigger than ever before in his career. Can he, like that, beat Bekrus Tabani and Martin Fitzwater? In my opinion, no. No, I would go with this order. I would say Martin Fitzwater, Bekrus Tabani, and then Rafael Brandau, and that would make uh, top 10. I think he would be 10th place this year, but we'll see, I mean, uh, at 9.5 weeks out, his conditioning is okay, in those uh, previous photos and, and videos, like, he didn't look uh, very lean, but apparently he is getting sharper very quickly, conditioning was never the issue with Rafael, it was usually, like, the size, not necessarily the fullness, but, like, the size, which he did add, uh, working the off-season with uh, his coach, Neil Hill, and I believe this year they're gonna nail it. They're gonna nail it for the Mr. Olympia as well, as they did for the Arnold Classic. Once again, he does look pretty big, pretty full. Conditioning is good, you know, for his standards, for his ability to lose fat. So I think he's gonna be in shape. He's gonna be good, like top 10, in my opinion. But no, I don't see him beating uh, Bekrus or Martin Fitzwater. I believe Martin Fitzwater is gonna be potentially in the second callout. Maybe even challenging some of those guys. Maybe if Hunter Labrada is a little bit off or Brandon Curry doesn't get in good condition but yeah most likely uh, Martin is gonna be the, the number one guy in the third call out so like uh, eighth place but there is still nine and a half weeks to go until the Mr. Olympia a lot of things can change however this weekend we have Texas Pro and Andrew Jack is gonna qualify by winning that show can he lose this show absolutely not <laughs> maybe um, no 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 I wanted to say maybe if he's, uh, like, off, not in condition, but even if he's off, you know, he's off, he's still much better than anybody else doing this freaking show. And also, Andrew Jack, based on this photo, looks like he's gonna bring pretty good conditioning, right? I mean, his face looks uh, pretty sunken, it looks like he worked hard, and uh, also the show, it turned out to be very, very weak show. I mean, it's a strong show, it's a good show, because Andrew Jack is doing it, but everybody else, no, no, not a lot of great bodybuilders. Maybe the reason for that is the fact that everybody knew that Andrew Jack is aiming for this show and everybody was afraid to show up. It could be that. But this show, it's really not the question of who's gonna win. It's maybe the question of who's gonna play second. So these two guys are most likely gonna make the top three. Jordan Hutchinson on the left and Nathan Appler on the right. Who's gonna beat who? I have no idea. That's gonna be, I guess, the only interesting battle of this show. Hutchinson is a bit bigger, I believe, but uh, Nathan Appler has a prettier shape, prettier structure, but he's smaller. Conditioning-wise, they're pretty close. I believe Nathan brought a little bit better conditioning this year. So, it's gonna be an interesting battle between these two guys, and they're both, like, new to the game. So, you know, whoever wins is basically, like, the maybe potentially the new upcoming star for next year or something like that. But, um, yeah, as far as winning the Texas Pro, it's Andrew Jack all day long. Like, it's not even a contest. 
But in about 8 weeks from now, we're gonna watch Brett Wilkin on the stage of Legion Sports Fest. And that show is like one week or two weeks before the Mr. Olympia, something like that. And no, that show is not the qualifier for the 2024 Mr. Olympia, it's qualifier for the 2025 Mr. Olympia. And uh, Brett Wilkin is coming back. This is what he looks like right now. It's pretty good. He kind of took some time off uh, last year because I believe he had some digestion issues, some gut issues, and he fixed that, apparently, and uh, he got back, he got all of his size pretty much back, and now he's prepping at 8 weeks out, his conditioning is uh, decent, the fullness is uh, good, uh, can he win Legion Sports and qualify for the Mr. Olympia for next year? I mean, it's very possible, but he's going against uh, Patrick Moore, as of uh, right now, he's the only other big name at that show, I mean, big name, the guy did play top 10 in 2019 Mr. Olympia, but since then, he really didn't bring anything uh, better, you know, that was his uh, peak, the peak of his career, and lately he started working with uh, Dominic Cardone, and it feels like they were working hard on bringing up uh, Patrick size. and today he posted this photo, and when I saw this, I was like, this looks exactly the same, he doesn't look any bigger than he looked uh, the last time he competed, and his coach is commenting, saying, way bigger this time around, out with the old. So I'm guessing this, in fact, is an older photo. And yeah, his conditioning is basically stage ready here. So I don't think he's this lean at eight weeks out. Uh, the, the, the caption kind of seems like he's saying this is the reason. He says, uh, through all the challenges, adversity and negativity, my time is still coming, which is what he has been saying since the 2019, basically, for the past five years. This is exactly the same caption every single post. And nothing happened yet, but maybe he's right, you know, they were calling him the future back then, but it turned out he's actually the past, uh, will things change uh, this year, will he truly bring something new, something much better to the stage this year, like a bigger package with the conditioning he brought in 2019, I don't know, but I hope so, maybe it's gonna be the case, and if that happens, then I don't know if Brad can beat him, because Patrick does have, you know, pretty good, pretty good shape and stuff like that, so, I don't know, it's gonna be an interesting battle, that show, whatever you guys think, tell me down below in the comment section, if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, for more content like this guys, stay tuned, subscribe to this channel, thank you so much guys for watching, see you soon, all the best, and bye bye.